News alert from Thailand. Four of the soccer players trapped in a cave were successfully rescued in a complicated and dangerous trek that included swimming more than a half mile in total darkness. The mission to save the remaining young people and their soccer coach expected to resume later today. The four boys have been taken to a hospital where they're recovering from a two-week ordeal. So what are the long-term physical and emotional effects on them? Joining us now is Dr. Michael Bodden, forensic pathologist and a Fox News contributor. Dr. Bodden, very glad to have you here to answer some crucial questions that I think a lot of people are asking. So we'll get to the, the effects of the boys right. who are still behind. Let's first, if we could, talk about those who have been taken to the hospital. What will they be checking for and sort of what could have happened to them in transition? Right. The, they'll be immediately checking for dehydration, uh, loss of weight, oxygen levels, all of which can be uh, corrected very easily. Uh, they'll also be checking for infections because they, if they have, as you saw on, on some of the tapes, they're putting mercuricum or iodine yeah. on the, the cells of the feet because uh, these kids could have uh, bruises and cuts on their feet where they're walking and other parts of the body, and they can get infected. And there may be bugs down there that are more infectious than the ones uh, we're uh, accustomed to. So they'll be checking for infections and pneumonia. And they should do very well physically, emotionally and mentally, it's hard to predict. Most young kids like this who have been in a pretty uh, supportive environment, even though they were under the cave, and who pe appear to be acting appropriately from the uh, videos that we have seen, uh, re respond very well. Uh, and they have, I'm sure they'll have uh, psychological and emotional support in addition to their families. Uh, so the outlook, I think, is very good for all or, mo or most of these kids physically and emotionally, the ones that have already come out. And then now we want to talk about the ones who are still left there because we were talking to you earlier, Mike yes. and I both, about sure. the oxygen levels. Um, and if you want to take that over, Mike. And, and kids this age, 12 to 16 or so, eat like weeds because they're, gro I mean, they're growing. Right. So the lack of proper nutrition, lower oxygen, what's the impact yeah, on the them? The oxygen is the critical part right now. Remember uh, in the Chilean 2010 uh, disaster where they had 33 miners in, in, uh, confined for 69 days, they were able to get a shaft down and they were able to put oxygen down. Right. Right now, we're breathing 21% oxygen. When it goes below 19%, we start getting a little woozy because the brain uses up about 25% of the oxygen we're breathing in. So when there's a lower oxygen, it's the brain that gets affected. And if it gets down to 15%, which is what they're uh, uh, stated uh, so far in the environment, uh, the person can become very disoriented and uh, unable to move properly, which becomes increasingly more important to rescue, to the, rescue them. Out, right. And if it gets below 10 percent, uh, deaths can occur with uh, unconsciousness, convulsions, all because of the lack of oxygens. They've tried to get a pipe or a shaft down, uh, but they couldn't do it the way they did it in Chile. So, uh, and the oxygen in there is just being used up by them every, all, the, all the time they breathe. And it's our understanding because it's such a narrow uh, path that they have to go to to get through to get the, to the kids. It's, it's going to be imp almost impossible to bring in oxygen tanks or something like that. Right? So yeah, given, they're having difficulty with right. that. Right. So given those conditions that you just pointed out and the need for oxygen and, and, and higher oxygen levels, how much time do they have, the rescuers have, to get those, these boys out there to safety without having lots of damage to their brain? The uh, lots of physical as well as emotional damage to the brain. Uh, that's tricky. It depends how high the water level is because what they've said is that they've been able to reduce the water level a great deal so maybe oxygen can go in. But now it's raining and e they can't stop in a cave like that water from coming in from all different sides uh, and raising the level. So they probably have just a few days to be able to get them out safely. I would think that they got the strongest four out first to see if it'll work. Uh, so there are a lot of different, it's 11 to 16 year olds, then the, the 11 year olds are going to be in the most jeopardy. Dr. Bodden, what's the impact on the guys who are left behind in terms of finding out that their teammates made it out safely? Is that a huge lift for them? That's a huge lift. That's a huge lift. And the, and the communication with the parents is a huge lift. And um, that means they can do it. 
So that's a great impact. The emotional toll, it looks like the scout, the, the, the guy in charge. Yeah, the soccer uh, coach. He's handled them very nicely while they were confined until they, for 10 days until they were rescued. And um, he also is going to, he's probably the one who's most uh, at risk from uh, emotional disturbance and PSTD well, yeah, or something. Yeah, because he also brought them That's there. That's right. There's guilt so feelings. Yeah. There's, uh, and, and he's apparently given over a lot of his food and thing to the kids. So I thought it was interesting you said that it was, you probably think that they got the stronger boys out first to see if it works. It, because is that because they're strong enough to help assist? Uh, or, or why do you say that? Well, I think uh, uh, strong enough not to panic. Uh -huh. You see, the, the thing is, as, as can happen, when you can't breathe, you st suddenly stop panicking, even though uh, you have enough oxygen in you. And that, that's why people drown uh, in the open. People uh, who suddenly can't swim quite well and they panic uh, before when the rescuers come and they can pull the rescuers down Flailing, so yeah. it would put the rescuer the divers at risk also if they attach to a diver and they start panicking because there's a momentary time when the the mask uh, isn't working when they're squeezing through a passage or something so it's a danger for for both the kids and the rescuers anything we haven't asked you that you'd like to point out well, just the, the appreciation, uh, as we said, the importance of oxygen. We take it for granted right. because we have 21%, but if it goes lower than that, as in fires sometimes, then uh, uh, the person gets confused, hallucinating, uh, and uh, doesn't uh, uh, function in a way that's helpful. But you still, like all of us, but you're coming from a di different perspective. From your perspective, you remain hopeful, though, right? Hopeful, and once they get out, they'll be physically, they'll be okay. Uh, 11 to 16, it's amazing how much injury and all uh, they'll bounce back from. That's, that's the good thing about being young. <laughs> so many good things about being young. Dr. Michael <laughs> Bodden, thank you so much for joining thank us. You, very important. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Thank you.